Um, everything around Oracle this week has been truly insane. Somebody tweeted Wednesday that we were watching a trillion dollar company trade like a penny stock. So can you explain for me and our emailer from July, Ben, and anyone else in the audience, how Oracle is this successful? I mean, and Larry Ellison, for the record, surpassed Elon Musk as the richest man in the world this week uh, on the heels of all this success. So you can take it any direction you want, but what's going on here? Well, I was going to start this with some self-flagellation because I've been wanting to write about Oracle and sort of their AI approach for a while. I was mm -hmm. you know, sort of looking for the right, you know, the right angle, just sort of never came up. And I'm like, oh, shoot. Like, the idea is to write about this before the stock pops, um, not <laughs> afterwards. But it looks like Ben wrote in July and you didn't bring it up on Sharp Tech. So I'm going to blame you oh. instead where we could have gotten <laughs> to this uh, uh, a long time ago. So I'm sorry. Could have Andrew. made people a lot of money here on the podcast in the middle of those summer mailbags. Yes, this one's on me. Apologies to the audience. Yeah, uh, thank you. I'm just trying to do better uh, in, in the future uh, <laughs> for our readers. Uh, so I haven't dug a ton into these specific earnings. I believe there was an announcement from OpenAI about signing a long-term deal i i assume that is all those remaining performance obligations like it's like a five billion dollar deal or something along those lines so mm -hmm. basically they're going to be the base for open ai going forward we've talked about microsoft sort of bowing out of that to a certain extent yeah. microsoft give permission to go elsewhere but but oracle was going to be the place they were going to go so i think that that's the I suspect that's the main driver. And also, it's also worth noting Oracle's gotten in trouble for some accounting irregularities in the past. Um, probably nothing going on here, but it's always worth keeping in mind. Um, so, uh, Word of just, caution. <laughs> yeah, with that okay. sort of precaution out of the way. Uh, what I think a way to think about what Oracle has done with AI is sort of make a bid to be the TSMC of data centers. And what I mean is TSMC came in like in uh morris chang has talked about this he's like when we started tsmc we had nothing to offer mm -hmm. and so that became our selling proposition we're going to build your chip we're not going to build our own chip we're not going to compete with you we will always meet your meet the obligation that you have because it's fine. We have nothing else going on anyway. So we'll make sure your chip gets built. <laughs> and you fast forward to today, a huge issue with Intel is no one trusts Intel. Intel is a competitive provider. They don't trust Intel to make sure they have capacity and they don't trust Intel not to steal their technology. And like, yeah. there's no worry about the TSMC. TSMC is going to deliver what they say they're going to deliver. They've proven that over years. They're not going to steal your technology. To the extent they use stuff, it's because it's it's a common element that everyone needs and everyone's cool with that. That's part of the benefit of everyone being on TSMC is that then TSMC learns from everyone, can help everyone out. It's, a, it's sort of a, a collective action solution uh, as opposed mm -hmm. to a collective action problem. What Oracle, their approach to, to AI or just to the, the cloud in general is, so there's the levels of, there's three sort of levels of the cloud. There's SaaS, software as a service. That's where yep. you use an application and you use it through the browser or through an app. And it's always updated because it's on the latest one because it's, it's like it's delivered as a service. There's platform as a service. This is where you're building an app, but underneath the app, someone's doing a lot of heavy lifting for you. So I like, I use uh, on WordPress. I am mm -hmm. not maintaining my own WordPress installation. I'm using it on Pressable, which is automatic service, but I used to be on WP Engine before. They are taking care of actually running the application for me. I pay much more, but I also have much fewer headaches and worries. I don't have to keep it updated or worry about security and all those sorts of bits and pieces. That is, right. so they're offering it as a, as a platform, platform as a service. Then underneath that, so Shatechery is like the service on top that customers access. I use the platform underneath. A more common example would be a lot of database applications, uh, a lot of like, uh, it's just like the middle level where you're not running the core thing. The underneath is infrastructure as a service. That is mm -hmm. like the AWS. I mean, AWS has lots of past services, but that's where you're just buying compute. You're buying storage. You're buying sort of like, and you're paying for it by the hour or whatever it might be on a usage basis. Oracle's like, we can go a level lower. Like, because if you use AWS, you're still sitting on top of a certain layer with, like, you're buying compute. You're not actually 
buying like the chip per se. And, and yeah. so Oracle's like, we're going to be much more bare metal. So if you need much higher performance applications where you don't have a weird Amazon layer sitting underneath it that you don't have control of and you can't manage, you can run it on here. And so they had a focus on HPC early, like high performance computing. It turned out this was really, really good for AI where you need to be down to the metal. You need to have sort of full control mm. and you want to have networking. They made a big bet on Ethernet um, and NVIDIA had their own sort of counter solution, which is InfiniBand. And NVIDIA has sort of like real Ethernet is just like it's the it's the technology that never dies. It will never die. It keeps being sort of being extended. NVIDIA sort of like really leaned into Ethernet as well recently. And then number three, and this is the big one, particularly right now, is Oracle's not making their own chip. They are, we mm. are going to be the preeminent NVIDIA shop in the world. We're going so to. So NVIDIA is just happy to do business with Oracle until the cows we're come in home. a world, every other cloud provider is like, we would definitely sell more if we had enough capacity. Why don't they have enough capacity? Because they don't have enough NVIDIA chips. NVIDIA is very interested in willing and do they want to sell to Amazon, who's spending yeah. all their time and money on Tranium? Do they want to sell to Google, who is selling all their time and money on TPUs? They do because they want to make sure they're everywhere and the CUDA ecosystem is important. But mm -hmm. they also would rather sell more to someone who's all in on being NVIDIA. And that is Oracle. They're all in on being a pure NVIDIA stack down to the metal. Again, doubling down on the, the Ethernet specifically, that is a, a really important thing. They had the smart NIC sort of that they developed in, internally that is apparently sort of very impressive to manage some of this horizontal sort of networking. But the, the you know, all the ver it's going to be all NVIDIA, it, all in, yeah. all the way. And now there's the, the uh, Neo because clouds. Because they're not trying to long term or medium term do they're anything not competing. to NVIDIA's that's right. business. That's right. Yeah. And so that's why I say it's kind of like the TSMC approach. And you, you think about it, they were the late entry, relatively speaking. It was like TSMC was late. They were be in mm -hmm. the you know the 80s or whatever. We have nothing. Oracle, we have nothing. We'll, what we'll do is we will maintain super high performance, bare bones infrastructure, and you can like – Again, it kind of started with HPC, but that ended up being a perfect on-ramp to AI. And so they right. were just positioned. And so if you're an open AI and you're really trying to push the boundary and you do feel you need performance down to a certain level, like it's just a very attractive partner. Neo Clouds are, they're also all NVIDIA shops. And that's why NVIDIA invests in them. And there's a bit of a circular money stream there that's mm -hmm. a little fishy. <laughs> but Enterprises are not going with the Neo Clouds, right? Like basically the Neo Clouds, a lot of their business is like companies like Microsoft and Amazon who can't get enough NVIDIA GPUs, like paying them. Mm. And then it circles back to NVIDIA, who's an investor. It's again very, very interesting uh financial arrangements. But the Oracle is a trusted name, right? Like right. for better or for worse, right? And uh well, I mean he the emailer talks about stodgy old Oracle. Are they doing sometimes stodgy anything? old is uh, is attractive. Uh but are are they offering anything unique to a customer like o OpenAI, like relative to what Microsoft had been providing OpenAI for the last several years? Is there something that differentiates Oracle's offering or is it all yeah, Oracle's willing to spend the money to build it? Uh and, okay. and I think I think Microsoft like there's just a real tension here where Microsoft wants to build for Azure and for their customers. I'm not sure to what extent they want to be in the, the taking the capital risk for being on on the bleeding edge model. Like a real build out. Yeah, yeah and and, or, and I think Oracle is fine with that. Like they're th I think Oracle sees this Oracle's doing what we kind of want Apple to do. Mm. They're taking all their money from their very established database business and they're just saying screw it let's just build something completely new we have all this cash flow let's let's use it yeah. and and they're built they've built this completely new business that the oracle they do the oracle cloud service it runs on there like but mm -hmm. really this is it has nothing to do with with the oracle traditionally and you know what you do that you deserve to be the richest guy in the world good for larry I was say. you know like that's <laughs> it, it really is, it's what we want apple to do they're being rewarded for it. Would it. Be yeah. more, it would be so much more satisfying as, if Apple were failing at AI while going mm -hmm. for it. The, the annoying thing is they're failing while not going for it. While talking about, look how little we spend on CapEx. Like, do you want yeah. me to clap for you? Like, do you want me to, to read these articles about the CFO nixing GPU orders and be impressed? Like, again, 
I can put my business analyst hat on and make that case. That's why I had that little bit in the article this week. As a technologist, Apple is just incredibly disappointing. Yeah. Well, and then that's why the Go emotional Oracle. reaction. My Oracle that- flag. <laughs> I mean, I can't say that I'm all that psyched about what Oracle's doing. It doesn't leave me uh, – it, it's not taking my breath away Badger the way red. previous <laughs> generations of the iPhone have. But in any event, yeah, I hear you. Um, and speaking of 